What is up guys, Roby Tech here. Guess what? We're gonna talk about another pre-built. Don't leave yet. I think you're gonna to wanna to hear this. Yes, 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 we're talking about a pre-built. I know, we've done two in like a month. What is the world coming to? I was pretty excited about this. NZXT approached me to talk about their build, uh, their BLD, their starter set. I was actually intrigued in this when they first announced this and I wanted to cover this here on the channel. Now here's the thing. Not everybody is going to build their own PC. So what we're gonna do is I wanna make sure that we actually have content for people who are, who are looking at something like this. Two of my most popular videos are my $500 and my $750 uh, PC, which you can actually check out here if you wanna see um, what something like this would look like. The $500 system I expect is actually less expensive and more powerful than this. But again, the benefits that you get from something like getting it pre-built is that A, you have a warranty. So there's one place to go to if you have a problem. Two, you know that the components all work together because they've been thoroughly tested. And then three, you just, it comes, it's in the box, you plug it in, you get one page. And sometimes people just want simple out of the box. NZXT is a favorite of mine when we talk about pre pre built If you go to NZXT's Let's Build site, and we'll put a link to that down in the description below, but it's L it's L-E-T-S B-L-D because it's Leet speak. That's not really, it's probably because Let's Build was actually, you know, not available. They actually built their whole site around, hey, what are the games you're gonna play? And and here's the, what frame rate do you want it to be at? And then it helps you choose a system. With the starter PC, it's like, hey, I wanna buy the starter PC. What's it gonna run Fortnite at? What's it gonna run Call of Duty at? And then if you care, what's it gonna run Rainbow Six at? Which apparently a lot of people, I don't play Rainbow Six. I don't know a lot of ton of people play Rainbow Six, but it's a popular one that they use quite, a, quite frequently. And so one of the reasons that I wanna talk about the NZXT build, and one of the things that makes me excited about this is that these guys use main core components, right? And it's all like, MSI, it's all, uh, you know, XPG, it's all Intel versus some sort of like when the Walmart PC, we're like, what, what is this in here? Or like, I don't even know who makes this. But for the most part, we're gonna talk about the specs here for the 699 system. For specs in this, our CPU is a Core i3 uh, 9100F. Uh, it's got an MSI GeForce GTX 1650 D6 Ventus. This does get the job done. We're gonna verify that. It's got a single XPG Gamex D10, 3000 megahertz, uh, eight gigs of RAM. Do you actually have four DIMM slots? You're not getting access to dual channel. That is something that is a little bit concerning. It's got a 512 Intel 16, 660p uh, M.2 NVMe SSD, which means you're gonna get fast load times. The case is the NZXT H510. It's using the MSI uh, B365M mortar. It's using a deep cool Gamex GTE V2 air cooler. It's using an EVGA, which not some sort of third party, who knows where uh, power supply, but it's using an EVGA 450 watt BR bronze PSU. It's actually also added MSI Wi-Fi, which is pretty critical for those of you who are wanting to use that. Last thing is, is it comes with Windows 10 Home and then it's got a two year warranty on all parts and labor. So that is what's in the system. You see where they tried to give you the most, like giving you 3000 megahertz. And even though it's a single dim, it's still 3000 megs at eight. You know, you can see that they pushed to try and get the most they could at the, at the price point they could. Next thing we're gonna do, let's talk about the setup process, the out of box process, because it's pretty cool how they, how they made this in terms of just getting it set up. So let's get that going right now. It comes with a single white sheet of paper that says here's the five steps you need to do to get your system up and going. And the other thing that I think is super rad is that here on the back, it actually says, here's step one, here's step two, if you were gonna use PS2, here's step three, here's step four, and then plug in step five. So step one is hook up our monitor. We're gonna go grab our monitor cable. We're gonna look for the one. We're gonna plug it in. Yay, Roby can read. He's so proud of himself. Yay, good job. Okay, step one done. Okay, step two, peripherals. Oh man, I gotta go get peripherals. Now with two, you've got your PS2 ones, which we're not gonna use, but right also number two is you can use these USB right here. You do not need to use USB 3.2 for your peripheral. So we plug that in. We have accomplished step two. Check. Okay, step three, connect the internet. It's showing you the hardwired way. Main reason it's doing hardwired, I'm thinking more than anything, is speed. Uh, unless you're running Wi-Fi 6, and if you're running Wi-Fi 6 and have all the high end, I don't think you're buying a $699 system. So we're gonna plug that in. There you go, we've connected our internet. Syncing up the sound, uh, not gonna do that, but if you did, it's showing you that there it is right there, number green, the green one right there. And the cool thing is it's actually showing you on the little sheet, it's showing you how to sync up the sound. And then finally, it says power it up. I'm just gonna pop that in right here. One thing I will say, make sure it's on the O when you plug it in. If it's on the one, because it might have happened in shipping, make sure it's on the O before you plug it in. And then we plug that in and go from there. Turn it on like so and hit. Voila, we have the power. So now it's all powered up 
and let's look at the uh, setup for this thing. If you want help on going through the window setup, this is gonna start just like it's brand new out of the box. So if you want help on that, we actually have a whole video on that. Just skip ahead to the windows is installed to just kind of see what this is. We're not gonna walk through all of that uh, here on the show um, now. Um, but it's, this is basically, Windows is ready to go. It's just gonna basically set up and go from there, so. We are here currently playing Fortnite, uh, which was one of the ones they said. He said you can get 60, uh, they, you could get 60 FPS. Now, one of the things it wasn't clear on, and what we're seeing, we're testing right now, is we don't know what the setting that they talked about is. So we tried Epic and we were seeing 30 frames, but here we are, this is on high. We're getting about 68, 70 frames per second, but we're seeing some dips here um, in terms of playing. Uh, but in terms of what the expected stuff is, our average is definitely averaging 60, 63 frames per second. But you're seeing some of this hitching and some of this could be a driver issue, but I wanna show uh, what you're gonna get here. Medium, uh, you could definitely run medium and hit that, hit that frame rate uh, easily uh, for sure. Oh God, what's that guy? Oh, die. Oh, you can't even hit me. Okay, I placed 95th. I literally just got attacked and going from there. So anyway, uh, what we saw from an average standpoint there though, overall was we were seeing 50 to 50 uh, to 60 frames per second. Again, wanna make sure that you know though, if you set it down to medium, you will easily be able to get their advertise, uh, the advertised uh, frames set. If you run it at Epic, we were only seeing 20 to 30 frames per second. Um, but let's go ahead and take a look at the second game they talked about, which they said they could get 60 frames per second, which is Modern Warfare. So we're gonna check that out now. <clears throat> okay, second game, now we're testing. So we saw, if you're gonna get the required frame rate that we've seen in Fortnite now, uh, you make sure you're running in medium settings. It looks like you can probably metal, mess with stuff, but you can definitely get the 64. We're now in uh, Call of Duty. We're testing uh, essentially the default settings. We're in queue. Okay, so here we are. We're actually, right now, it's working really well, sitting at 60, 64. So this is actually probably, oh, I almost forgot to deploy my parachute. Uh, this is actually pretty close to what I expected in terms of what it said from advertised frame rate. I know we're not in a game, but this is pretty close to being in a game in terms of 60 frames per second. Ooh, we got a guy. Ooh, boy. Ooh, doggy. So yeah, we're sitting at 58, 60, so which is right around where they said advertise. We'll give this a little bit more just to make sure. We'll get some combat. Don't worry, I'll get killed here pretty soon. Right now it's actually doing better. Again, default settings. It looks like if you wanted to get that advertised frame rate, you definitely could. This game is definitely playable at this level. Um, you do have some room to actually graphically improve to probably get close to that 60 FPS, which is pretty neat. Whoa, God. Oh, that was just, <laughs> I shot at nothing. <laughs> that was good. I, I uh, literally killed my own shadow, guys. That's uh, it's good Good to go, Ruby. Good to go on that one. Way to, way to kill your own shadow. Let's wrap it all up. Uh, 699 bucks advertised to basically do both Fortnite and uh, Call of Duty at 1080p at 60 plus FPS. Uh, definitely hit both of those in terms of uh, the mark. If you're looking for an entry level PC that's gonna get you into gaming, maybe if you just wanna get into streaming and test it out, or just maybe a great gift for uh, you to kind of get in touch, uh, touch base, this is more than capable of that. The cons are uh, not very easily upgradable. You don't have it like, again, you upgrade, you can basically do some RAM, but you're kind of underpowered there unless you're gonna do like a 2000 series. If you're gonna do a 2000 series NVIDIA CPU, um, the motherboard doesn't really support anything like higher end in terms of, you know, you could do a ninth gen, but you can't really do 10th gen. This has got a, you know, a 500 gigabyte uh, NVMe drive. And I learned very quickly that uh, Call of Duty uh, pretty much swallowed up half of that uh, just alone. So there may be some potential bottlenecks there if you're getting this for some of the games that are going there. This is not, this may be something you may want to add some additional storage. Pros for this is like, again, you, you have known parts, you know who everybody is. It's all from major manufacturers like EVGA, MSI, XPG, Deep Cool. Like you're not getting like no name parts. You have that two year service warranty. You have a call in number. Should you have issues with this? It's an attractive looking PC uh, just because of the H510. Can you build something cheaper? Yes, you can. But if you don't have an option, it feels like this is a more solid option in terms of something if you're looking for a starter PC. If you like this kind of content, I'd love to know down in the comments below. Make sure you slap that subscribe button, whip that like button, and ring that notification bell so you get a notification each and every time we release super amazing, awesome, crazy, brilliant content just like this. I just did that to kind of spice it up a little. Uh, also, make sure you follow us on all the socials. We're getting huge on TikTok. We're going to be TikTok stars. I'm officially a tech talker, just so you know, tech talk. Uh, on TikTok, but yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Also Instagram, Twitter, um, and Facebook uh, because your parents love me too. So facebook.com slash Robitech. 
Guys, have an absolutely great night, and we will see you on the next show.